Hi, my name is Mark and I help people over 40 learn to code and get started in the tech industry. Today, I've got a really interesting project for you. I've got a JavaScript password generator. Let's take a look. So the way this password generator works is that the user selects a length for their password between 20 and on the low end five characters. Let's choose 10. And then they can choose various options. Mixed case, uppercase only, lowercase only. And then they can choose to include numbers and non-letters. Let's do lowercase non-letters. And there you can see we've got pound R, some brackets, a J. Let's generate another one. Let's remove the checkbox by include non-letters. And now we're just getting lowercase letters, but we could include numbers or both. So pretty simple application, but it actually does something useful. Let's take a look at the code. I'm gonna review the code line by line. We're gonna start with the HTML, go on to the CSS, and finally take a look at the JavaScript that really makes this program run. So of course, on line one, we have our HTML doc type. That's specifically the HTML5 doc type. And then our opening HTML tag on line two, followed by the document head on line three. We then have our meta tags. The first one just defines our character set as UTF-8. And the second one defines our viewport for responsive design, simply allowing this to look good across a number of different devices. We have our title element. And then we have our style element, which encloses our CSS. I'm gonna skip that for now so we can come back to our CSS in a bit. Where our style tag ends, so does our head on line 55, and we get into the body. Our entire document is included in a container class, and we then have our H1, which is password generator. We have our first logical division for password length, that includes a label, which has the words password length in it. We use the for attribute to link it to the input. The input where the user puts the number is of the type number. Its ID is length. Notice that the ID of the input matches the value of the for attribute in the label. We have a minimum length of five, a maximum length of 20 characters, and an initial value of eight. We then have another logical division, which includes our radio buttons. We have a radio button for mixed case, which is checked initially. We have a radio button for uppercase, which is initially blank. And then we have another one for lowercase. You'll notice that all of these have the same name and the same type. They're all radio buttons, so the type is radio, but the name is what links them together. And if I click one, the others cannot be selected simultaneously. That's why we use the same name, in this case, case option, for all of our radio buttons. It's what makes them work together. The next logical division includes our checkboxes. We have checkboxes here because these options can be either on or off, regardless of whether we're getting a mixed case, uppercase, or lowercase password. So the first option allows us to include numbers, and the second include non-letters. On both of these, the type is checkbox, but they each have unique IDs, so we know which one is selected. We then have our generate password button. And then finally, a logical division where our generated password appears. It appears right inside the P tag on line 75 that's ID'd as password output. And that's really it for the significant HTML that's part of this application. So we're gonna move on and look at our CSS. So our CSS, of course, starts with the style tag on line seven. We have a body element where we select a font, in this case, Arial, with any sans serif font being a backup. Our default text alignment will be centered. We're not having any margin or padding on the body by default. And we're setting a background color of just a very, very slight gray, more towards white than towards gray. We then have our container, and you remember everything is within the container. The maximum width of the container is 600 pixels. We have a margin around the container of zero auto. 
This is a bit of a hack that keeps things centered within a logical division. So just remember zero auto means that everything's going to be centered within the container. We have a padding of 20 pixels, pulling the elements away from the individual edges of the container, background color of white, and then a box shadow around the container. You can see that box shadow very light at the edge of the white container in the user interface. For our H1, we have a dark gray and a font size of 24 pixels. For the input type number, that's our password length input, we have a width of 50 pixels. And we then stylize our button with a background color of blue, text color of white, no border, a little bit of padding between the text and the actual button itself. The cursor is a pointer. What that means is when we mouse over the actual button, notice the pointer or cursor changes to that gloved hand. For some reason, that gloved hand always makes me think of Mickey Mouse. Our button has a font size of 18 pixels and a top margin of 20 pixels. When we hover over the button, the button darkens slightly, and then we have a media query. And what this media query does is it changes the H1 and the top margin for a width below 480 pixels. So 480 pixels below will apply these two style rules. All right, so now we've looked at the CSS, it's time to look at the heart of the operation, our JavaScript. So here's our JavaScript, beginning of course with the script tag on line 79. I'm creating a object here called characters, and this object is a dictionary. It's got a number of elements with a label or a key, and then a value. So first we have the key lower, and its value is A through Z in lowercase letters. We have upper, whose value is A through Z in uppercase letters. We have number, and we have symbol. So essentially what characters does is it defines all the characters we're gonna use in our passwords. Line 87 starts the generate password function. If you're looking for the word function, we're using what's called the arrow notation here, which is part of the latest version of HTML5, which doesn't require we actually use the word function explicitly. We're passing into it the event, because this is launched when the button is clicked, the generate password button. And so here's what happens. The first thing we do is we get the length value out of the password length input. Document, get element by ID, length dot value. We then get the value of mixed to see whether or not that's checked. That'll be a true or false, uppercase and lowercase. So we're getting all of our radio buttons taken care of there, and all of those will hold a true false value. Let's go ahead and take a look at that using the developer tools. So I'm gonna console log here, the value of mixed, the value of uppercase and the value of lowercase. I'm gonna save our document with Command S and let's open our developer tools. And here's our app on a simulated iPhone screen. Let's go ahead and choose uppercase only and click generate password. And notice we get false, true, false, right? The values for mixed was false uppercase only true, lowercase only. Let's try it again. This should be false, false, true. And then finally, if mixed is selected, we get true, false, false. So what that dot checked property is doing on 89, 90, and 91 is essentially returning the value true if the radio button is active or false if it's not. I'm gonna remove my logging statement here just by commenting it out. The include numbers value is document that get element by ID include numbers checked. So that's right here, true if checked, false if not. And then the next line deals with the non letters, true if checked, false if not. So now we have the values for the length, our mixed uppercase and lowercase, include numbers and include non letters. And these will guide us as we create the password. So we're gonna store the characters that it's possible to use in the password in the variable password characters, which is initialized as an empty string. 
If mixed, we'll add the characters from characters.upper and characters.lower. And you remember we defined the characters object up on line 80. If we're including numbers, we'll add characters numbers. And if we're including symbols, we'll add characters.symbol. So let's go ahead and use our console tool again, and let's console log out the value of password characters. All right, so let's go with mixed, which means upper and lower case. Let's include numbers and include non-letters. And there you can see this, and there you can see those are the possible characters we could use in our password. If I remove numbers, you notice that the numbers are no longer part of the set. If I remove the check mark from non-letters, now we just have our upper and lowercase letters. Make this selection here, uppercase only. We're now down to just uppercase letters, just lowercase letters. I'm going to go ahead and comment that out again. On line 104, we're going to create a variable called password. This is going to be the actual password generated. Here I've created a loop on line 105. We're going to loop from zero until length. And remember, length comes from the user's input for the password length. And then each time through the loop, we're going to add to the password variable a randomly selected character from the entire set of possible password characters. We do that with a little fancy math we'll get the number of the character, its position, from math.floor, math.random, times the length. Essentially generating a random number associated with a password character. And then we'll add that character to the password itself. We'll do that due to the loop for as many times as we have characters. Once we've created the password, we'll put that in the password output in line 109. And that's the end of what happens when the generate password button is pushed. Let's try it one more time. Let's do a password length this time of 12. Mixed, include numbers, include non-letters, and generate the password. There you can see our console log is still active, and there's the password we got in the end. The only thing left is to make the actual generate password button work. And there you can see on line 112, we've got document get elements by tag name button sub zero. Essentially get elements by tag name returns an array of all of the button elements in HTML. There's only one, so it's array index zero. We add an event listener to that. We're listening for the click. Click runs the function generate password, which begins on line 87. And that's really it for our code. That's our working app. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. I'm Mark. See you next time.